Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. We have another great article from Fierce Wireless. I will leave it in the description down below so you guys can check it out. AT&T first U.S. carrier to jump on Ericsson 5G startup program. Now, what's interesting about this and what they're referencing in the article briefly, and it's quoted, customers are taking advantage of our low latency, high speed network. Now, the only issue that I have with that statement is it's not at the scale that us enthusiasts would like it to be at. And I think what the consumer, what AT&T's consumer can serve, um, consumers deserve. It's still a competitive nature in, in the industry, I would say. And the consumer still pays a price. So if I'm paying just for an example... $250 a month for five lines on AT&T. And let's say I would pay around the same on Verizon, but Verizon has C-band in the area, AT&T does not. You know, I think as a consumer, you could be upset about that. You know, why does AT&T not have C-band in my area when I pay the same, you know, as what a Verizon customer pays that has C-band? You know, some some of us may question that. I know the the average consumer doesn't really know or is not interested in that. But that's kind of the point that I want to make. That AT and T is just not at the scale that you know as to what they're pointing out. Now they do have that in some areas. They have some C band. They got some millimeter wave that's giving them lower latency, higher speed. But it's just not at the scale. You know, even comparing to Verizon, they're not at that same type of scale in the build up. Verizon has more millimeter wave deployed. And they have, of course, more C-band out there. And we know for a fact AT&T has not yet gotten started on their DoD deployment, not until the summer. So, in other words, what AT&T is doing here, working in, in partnership with Ericsson, they're looking for the use case, the applications, the, you know, what, what can we do to further monetize, <coughs> excuse me, the, the 5G network. In other words, in my opinion, I don't think it's, it's uh, groundbreaking in terms of going from LTE to 5G. I've said that before. I just think now they want to monetize the capacity. That's really what it is. There should not be a case, at least from what I've told, that a mobile device should continuously get an eight, 900 megabits a second. If that mobile device continuously gets eight, 900 megabits a second, then the carriers are not making money. They're losing out. You have to monetize that capacity. It's just how the game goes. If you put forth the investment to invest, put up the, the, the equipment, put in the, the fiber in the ground, you got to monetize it. It has to slow down. You have to put users, services on the capacity so you can monetize and make money. And that's what AT&T essentially is doing here. They're doing their research. I've even been told um, last year on an internal basis just to share that with you guys, that at and is even considering monetizing latency. You want gaming latency, you know, one, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. You know, you they could potentially monetize for it. And I think they, they could. They could very well do that. Because, you know, one to two millisecond latency is not needed for the average consumer. Really not needed. Unless you're a heavy gamer, you don't really need the latency that low. A 10, 15, a 20 millisecond latency should just be fine for the average consumer. So that's what AT&T was kind of looking at in meetings is how do we monetize? Can we monetize latency? And they very well can. It's really not needed that low a latency. Even on a, on a phone, a seven, six millisecond latency is really not needed if, if, we, if we break it down. Yes, it loads snappier, but you won't really notice that too much versus a 15, 16 millisecond uh, latency. Unless you're gaming on a device, then of course... You know, that lower latency is always needed. But other than that, there isn't really much of a difference. So essentially, I know some of you have asked me, this partnership for the 5G startup program is really just about, you know, what can we monetize on 5G? What applications can we create that will monetize and use the capacity? So leave all your comments in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading them. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow the social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.